Wow, what a day. You guys roll pretty early. You beat uh, Fairfield rather easily. You beat uh, Dwenger, and then you come in here and you beat Laporte in game one, and then in game two they punch you back and pretty hard. Right. Um, you know, and even we were up 16-8 to eight when their coach called their first timeout, and, um, you know, what I talked to my team about in the timeout was, you know, we have to stay focused here. We've not won anything yet. You know, they're a great ball club, a great program, and, you know, we need to come out and stay aggressive here. And all of a sudden they got in one rotation and they started serving us and, um, you know, just – punched right back at us. Those 15 point closeout sets are a little bit of a different animal. You have a lot less wiggle room right. at 15 than you do at 25. Do you change your approach at all with the girls when you go into that third or fifth set to 15 instead of 25? Well, serving wise, I mean, you don't want a lot of serving errors because you want the other team to earn their points. And um, I think we had two serving errors, I think, in that last, uh, that third set. So um, you know, w there's a fine line between, you know, getting the ball in play, but not also not giving a great program an, an easy ball to pass. So we had to try to, to find that rhythm, and um, I, I felt like our serving was a little bit down in that match. Walk us through not just this closeout match, but all three of them today. Overall, how pleased are you? How unhappy are you with how the team played today? And who do you think really played well individually for you today? Um, as a team, I mean, I'm extremely happy. I mean, there's three great ball clubs that we played mm -hmm. today. And, uh, you know, our goal obviously was to come out of here 3-0, and and we did that. Um, I also talked to him about, you know, in the Fairfield match, we beat him pretty easily in game one. Right. But we're, we're pressed in that second set. Mm -hmm. And to be in situations like that in a third set against Laporte, I mean, we need to be in those situations. We need to see how we're going to react with, when people push us back. Um, th that aren't afraid of us, and and I was pretty pleased with, you know, if we were pushed, um, you know, we didn't we didn't give in, we pushed right back. Speaking of pushed, game two with Laporte, you're up 16-8, and they roll off eight in a row to tie the match and actually take a couple leads late and pushed you really hard to the wall. Um, what did they do differently? How did you guys respond to what they were doing at that point in the match? Um, I think their service pressure got a little tougher. Um, and then we had some kids that were a little bit afraid to make some plays, and that's what I talked to them about. You can't, you can't be that way. I mean, we've played well all season. Um, you got to be confident in who who you are and who we are, and and what we're doing. So, um, I mean, those were just some some issues that we discussed, and um, I think they got over them there in the third set. Well, I was going to say you come to set three and you got to win or go home a loser in the last one, and you don't want to do that. And you guys burst out of the gate. You know, you had a 5-2 to two lead there, and then we were tied at every digit from 5 to 9, 10, 11, 12. I mean, seven or eight ties in a row. Mm -hmm. And then you stemmed the tide, and you got those final three crucial points. Not coincidentally, you've got a senior back there in Madison Bergeron serving, and she's she knows what this is about. Right, yeah. And, um, you know, I told him after the match that I felt like the play of the game was – um, you know, when she ran clear over to the left side of the court and made that great save and, and put it up to Wooden to, I mean, she just free balled it in, but it was just the hustle and the effort to, to make that play to keep us in the rally. We win the rally, and, I mean, that, I think that was the, the biggest play of the match. You know, I've talked before about how your team has so many weapons at any given time in your rotation, and, you know, you got great kills today out of Elam, Nichols, Wooden, Languth. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like no matter who Maddie takes the ball to, they're right. capable of putting it away, and more right. times than not, they do for you. Right, and and that's what makes us good. Um, and our ball control people in the back row are good. Um, they have to be good for us to be good, though. I mean, if our ball control people in the back aren't good, then the other team knows who we're going to set the ball to um, because we're out of system. So, you know, as long as they're good, then our front row people are going to be good because Maddie's going to get the ball where it needs to go. Guys are on a roll. I think you're, what, 14 and 1 now? 14 or 15 and uh, 1? Yeah, I think we're <laughs> 14 and 1. I've lost track. And, yeah, four, I've well, lost track. <laughs> you know, you had that great match here with Laporte, and you almost beat him, and you haven't lost since. And you've barely lost a set since. Mm -hmm. Laporte finally got one from you today. But mm -hmm. you guys are really clicking on all eight cylinders right now. And you've got the county tournament coming up in a couple weeks, but you've got a busy mm -hmm. week or two before that. Right. Uh, this stage of the season, how do you feel about your progress and where you guys are? You're number one. You've only lost once to a nationally ranked team, and you're blowing people off the court more times than not. You must be pretty satisfied with where you are. Yeah. Um, actually, I mean, this early in the season, I mean, you don't necessarily want to be 
as good, you know, as as we are. But I told my team that <laughs> if we're too good, yeah, I mean, it, if we can continue to get better and and put some things in there, obviously we're not perfect. There's things to work on. If we can continue to improve on those, um, we'll even be better at the end of the season. Well, and you're not, you know you got a lot of quality seniors, but you've got some great underclass players. Right. And Gabby Zagunda as a freshman, Cameron mm -hmm. Campbell as a freshman, mm -hmm. you've got some ninth graders playing significant minutes for you, right. and they're playing well. They're not right. playing like scared ninth graders. Right. Yeah, and and they they don't. I think uh, Campbell's come a long way here in the last couple of weeks. I mean, just every time she's on the floor, I think she's going to get better and better. Um, she's an athletic kid and um, understands the game. So, you know, each touch she can get, uh, the better she's going to get. And, you know, to go along with our two other sophomore outside hitters in Wooden and Nichols, I mean, we are pretty young, um, really, if you think about it. But, right. um you know, just the more touches we can get and get them in game situations, I think the better we're going to be. I'd like to have your poker hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that.